Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. I hope you're having a good weekend. Uh, there's a lot to be said for um, good matchmaking. In fact, there's an awful lot to be said for it because it's the, the best way or the most important aspect of bringing on a, uh, a prospect. Taking them up in those incremental steps, setting realistic goals, not jumping too many levels at once. And we saw a very good example with Khalil Majid when he took on Tom Farrell. Uh, this was on the undercard of Linares versus Catterall. Um, Majid came in with 11 wins, 3 KOs, no defeats, no draws, and had fought absolutely no one. Literally no one, just all journeymen. And Farrell came in with 21 wins and 7 defeats. And he's been around the block a fair bit from Liverpool, Farrell. 33 now, Majid's 26. Um, and he only got 5 KOs on his, out of his 21 wins. But he'd only been stopped twice in his 7 defeats. Now, make no mistake about it, Farrell came to win. He he put it on uh, Majid from, from the opening bell. He was after him. He was going to ask questions of this young man. Um, uh, but it was a case of can the, you know, the untested young gun with all the youthful energy and the, the guy who's coming into his physical prime, can he um, overcome the inexperience, answer the questions that are going to be asked of him and overcome the, you know, not shot, but rather somewhat over the hill Tom Farrell. Uh, Farrell had, been, had lost two of his last three. He, he'd uh, retired after six against Henry Turner. Harlem Eubank had outpointed him. Um, he had won a, a fight in, um, um, I think it was June, July 2022 against um, Oled uh, Fij Fijabi. Um, and that was a six round um, win. And against the guy who had, I think it was 16 2 record or something like that, but Udi fought. You know, this is the question. And then before that, he'd lost a split decision over three to Corey Gibbs. And that was during one of those, you know, prize fighter things, whatever they call them. So he's kind of had a stop-start career over the last few years, looking for opportunities. And he, you'd got the impression that Farrell was thinking, I'm going to take this opportunity. And he did. He came straight at uh, Majid. He landed some terrific um, right hands. You know, they're only individual punches, but they, they did illustrate that Majid was getting caught. Uh, Majid looked physically the stronger, broader-shouldered, a bit bigger. Um, Farrell, orthodox fighter, just as Majid was. So with, they looked, it, it did look like one of those, you know, crossroads fights for for the old timer. He's 33, he's not that old. And if you're my age, 33 is nothing. But, you know, this was an opportunity that really Farrell, it was a last chance saloon opportunity. And he really was trying to take it. And he really was, you know, I had it after four rounds, I think I had it two each. Then the fifth round, the key to the door was discovered by Majid because he landed a very good body punch. I think it was a... I think he went he went to the body with a with a right and then a left. He followed it up with a left um, and put Farrell on the floor. But Farrell got up and even though he looked he looked shaky. And he, to be honest, prior to the knockdown, the body punches, it did look as if that was that was gonna be um, the answer for Majid because Farrell did not seem to like being punched to the body. I mean, no one does, but there, he, there seemed to be a definite, you know, negative reaction from him. He wasn't able to disguise the, the discomfort. Uh, but after being knocked down in that fifth round, he came back, started slinging his punches, um, being very, very aggressive, getting in close, um, trying to smother Majid. Majid himself, a little bit of an experience, wasn't able to sort of work his way out and just create enough space between the two to let his own hooks go um, and certainly at the start of the sixth round I mean this was this was an eight rounder by the way so it wasn't like it was a 10 or a 12 round it was an eight rounder you know okay you know Farrell was probably thinking okay I got knocked down but I got another couple of rounds if I win these two rounds I've won a couple early on maybe I can grab something he came at uh, in the sixth round he came at Majid um, like it was the final round to be honest uh, again very aggressive, coming forward constantly, letting punches go. Was landing some some nice right hands. Um, probably did he neglect the body a little bit to Majid? Because don't forget, Majid's got a body too. If if you've been hurt to the body, come back with your own body shots. Never a bad thing. Just to keep the opponent honest. He did. He was throwing a few Farrell, but the power wasn't really there. And even though Majid only had, it's only got, well at the time he only had three uh, stoppages on his resume in um, 11 wins he did look to have the heavier hands but then of course <laughs> Majid you know having had the success in the fifth round to the body 
starts to let his hands go to the body again, puts Farrell on the floor again with another uh, serious body punch. And I think this was, I think, was it a left hook that put him over? Farrell goes down. It might have been a one-two combination. But either way, Farrell went down and he got up, but he looked, he really did, did look in some discomfort, nodded to the referee, said, OK, come on, let's do it. Steve Gray was a ref. Um, but then he got flattened again, floored again, uh, and by body punches inevitably, and Steve Gray waved the fight off. So this was a very good step up for Khalil Majid. And Tom Fowler, all credit to him, he came to go out in his shield, which he did. He's always been a good sort of domestic gatekeeper. You know, you've got to be good to beat Tom Fowler. He will outbox you. He's got good skills. Um, punch resistance, perhaps not as great as you might think, but uh, as you might want. But uh, he can. It'll take more than one punch to put him over. He's not chinny. Put it that way. Uh, weakness to the body, definitely. But at 33, it's hard to see where he goes from here. But um, make no mistake about it. Khalil Majid will be a better fighter for this uh, six rounds. Six round TKO for Khalil Majid. Uh, I'd, I'd have him in pretty quick again. Another couple of eight rounders, maybe bump it up to ten after another. Because he really was fighting absolutely no one before he got in with Farrell. But this was good matchmaking, really, really good matchmaking, and we need to see more of it for this for this young man. He's 26, so give him a couple of years until he's in his absolute prime. Why not spend those two years, you know, fighting, you know, good domestic level opposition? Maybe fight for, you know, go down the old route, area title, English, British, Commonwealth, European, and so on. Do it that way. I keep saying this. It's not just the, the age I am. I was brought up with British fighters being brought up that way. I think it's the best way to do it. Take the sensible steps. But some more eight-rounders for, for uh, Khalil. Bump them up to ten-rounders maybe after another couple. And then we'll see. We'll take it from there. Maybe get a Midlands. Uh, not a Midlands. Uh, an area fight. Where was he from, Khalid? I can't remember offhand. Is he Midlands? I wanted to say Midlands, but I might be wrong. I think he's from Yorkshire or Lancashire. I want to say Bolton, but I might be wrong. I'll have to check on that. But anyway, get him an area title, 10-rounder, and see where he goes from there. So what did you think of this fight? Have a look at it. It's on the, the uh, undercard of um, Linares versus Catterall. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about Khalil Majid. Is he going anywhere? How do you think he should be brought on? Comments below. Uh, and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the like button and spread the word about Joe Stunner Boxing. Appreciate it as, as always and bye for now.